On April the 30th, 2007, just a little over three years ago, Israel Today ran this amazing headline story. Rabbi reveals the name of the Messiah. Rabbi Itzhak Kaduri was famously known for his memorization of the Bible, the Talmud, and other Jewish writings. He was a teacher and a revered master at Nahalat Yitzhak Yeshiva Seminary. He knew Jewish sages and celebrities of the last century and rabbis who lived in the Holy Land who kept the faith alive before the state of Israel was even born. Kaduri was not only highly esteemed because of his age of 108, but he was charismatic and wise. Chief rabbis looked up to him as a righteous man. Thousands visited him to ask for counsel or healing. His followers speak of many miracles, and his students say that he was a prophet of many disasters. A few months before Kaduri died at the age of 108, he surprised his followers when he told them that he had personally met the Messiah. The Messiah had appeared to him. He wrote the name of the Messiah in a note, he said. His official website had mentioned the Messiah note. David Kaduri, the rabbi's 80-year-old son, confirmed that in his last year, his father had talked and dreamed almost exclusively about the Messiah and his coming. My father has met the Messiah in a vision, he said, and he told us that he was coming very soon. Kaduri gave a message in his synagogue on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, teaching how to recognize the Messiah. He also mentioned that the Messiah would appear to Israel after Ariel Sharon passed. Sharon suffered a hemorrhagic stroke on the 4th of January 2006 and remained in a long-term care facility in a vegetative state from late 2006 until his death. Sharon died at 1400 hours on the 11th of January 2014. Now Israel buried its former Prime Minister Ariel Sharon today, celebrating the achievements of a man seen as a war hero by many at home, but as a war criminal by many in the Arab world. Tony Blair and U.S. Vice President Joe Biden were among those who paid tribute. Full state honors for a national hero, his coffin draped in the flag he devoted his life to fighting for. One of the last statesmen from Israel's founding days, Ariel Sharon was eulogized outside his country's parliament, the current prime minister paying tribute. Ariel Sharon stood firm on our right to act in our own defense, so that we can live here in security, a right upon which we still insist today. A heroic warrior to many, Sharon fought in all of Israel's five wars, leading decisive campaigns in two of them. As a soldier and then a statesman, he was ruthless in his defense of Israel. His approach to the Palestinians was one of confrontation. Many saw him as a war criminal responsible for the 1982 massacre of the Sabra and Shatila refugee camps. But he did make concessions. Months before a stroke left him in a coma, he began the unilateral withdrawal from some of the occupied territories. The state had to be protected for future generations. When that meant fighting, he fought. When that meant making peace, he sought peace. And the same iron determination he took to the field of war, he took to the chamber of diplomacy. This afternoon he was buried at his family farm. Soon after Ariel Sharon passing, in 2015 Messiah appeared to Nathan, and in 15 minutes showed him Israel's destiny. 15-year-old Jewish boy Nathan was taken to heaven. By the Messiah returning back describes his experience exactly what is written by the prophets. And in the Tanakh or Old Testament regarding the end of days. He stated the following, one, one of these days. The whole world will be involved in a war, that is World War III. Two, the person who will start the war will be somebody named Gog Rush. Happy Holy Day, Holy Days and Seasons for Rejoicing. When Rabbi Yehuda asked me, like every Feast of Tabernacles and Passover, to come here and give a lesson, I had prepared something about the Messiah. And I didn't know that, blessed be his name, that on the path one wants to follow, the Holy Blessed One would send me such help from heaven. 
The posters were printed and hung. Here, the young man sitting on my right, his name is Nathan. He is not from Jerusalem. I will begin with an introduction and say he went through a very difficult experience, and in a moment he will tell you what he saw and what messages he received. What is difficult for people to understand, what's hard to understand here, is that he is only 15 years old. And when the soul leaves the body, it can receive huge amounts of information in just minutes. After I went back down, the whole thing was only 15 minutes. And they told me up there that after three hours, you can't go back down. Tell them a little bit about hell. Hell? Okay. Not a lot, just a little. Okay. Now, in the beginning, I told you I went higher and higher and higher. And the whole time I was there in that world, I saw thousands of other things that I can't explain to you. I so they showed you the two ways, that there is here and there. But the audience sitting here more or less knows all of that. That there is this and that. You are just coming now and strengthening for us what we read in the books and learn. Now, what is more interesting for us? I want to ask you questions about the Messiah. Okay, great. Could you know who the Messiah was? I couldn't know. I could only know what his traits were, what he needs to be in order to be the Messiah. And can you tell us if he is here or there? He's here. He must be here. It can't be that the Messiah is dead. That can't be. That can't be. It has to be somebody who is here, who people know. But when he becomes the Messiah, everybody will be surprised. That means that when the Messiah, with God's help, is revealed, it will be a surprise? A huge surprise. And people will say, ah, that's the Messiah. It will be like, wow, that's the Messiah. Like that. <laughs> Good. Now I want to go back to something else. You say you could know what was going to happen in the world. When you were there, what did you understand was going to happen? According to what I knew there, I'm sure I know it. When I was up there, I knew what was going to happen in the world. And according to what I knew, what I told you about the Messiah and everything, I also knew that the redemption and the revelation of the Messiah is going to happen very soon. It's like it's going to happen in the very near future. It's imminent. It's like imminent. The redemption is really coming. Now tell me, when you were there, there was no concept of time. How can you estimate there the concept of time? What is imminent? Is it 20 years, 2 years, a month? Imminent is right away, like in the coming months. In the coming months, okay. Now do you also know what will happen? Yes, I know what is going to happen, yes. And you know it from there? Yes, only from there. Everything I know is only from there. And where are we holding right now? Where are we holding now? In a period, not a good one at all. I can tell you that the redemption is very close to here. And what will happen during that redemption? Very bad things are going to happen, but it depends on who, as far as I knew. It is certain it will occur in the coming months. There is that possibility. If we all repent, then it won't happen. The bad things in the redemption won't happen. The bad things. But the redemption will arrive. The redemption will arrive. Yes, but if they sin, the redemption will be worse. If they sin, it will come to pass much more harshly. Much more difficult. And if everybody repents, it will come to pass in an easy way. It's going to happen no matter what. Now, according to what you know there, what you saw there, how is it going to happen? Based on what I knew, right now our situation is not good at all. I mean, not good. What's going to happen? It's going to be a very big war, and everybody, the whole world, will be in that war, based on what I learned. The whole world will be in that war. How will it begin? It will be started by somebody named Gog, as far as I knew up there, only up there. He is called Gog? Yes. And do you know who this Gog is? I am sure I know who it is. Who is it? Obama. President Obama. He will start Gog and Magog? He will be the one who starts that war. In those two weeks, what is the bad thing? More than a few million people will die. They will die like the only thing that saves them is if they repent. If a person learns the Torah and does good, that's what will save him.
It says in the Gemara when they asked Rabbi Hagadol, what can a person do to save himself from the birth pangs of Messiah? Rabbi Hagadol answered, he should occupy himself with the Torah and acts of kindness. That's what will save him. Now tell me, what is this? What kind of war is this? A spiritual war? No, no. A war of soldiers against soldiers? What is it? Partly. At first it will be a war between soldiers. He will be saved. What will happen is like this, based on what I saw up there. What do you mean what you saw? Did you see it like a movie of the future? Yeah, like a movie of the the future. I see it in a movie of the future. You see it in a few seconds, but it's lots and lots of time. Like the movie of my life I saw it first. They showed me my life in a split second. Like in a fraction of a second, they showed it to me. And I saw every single second of my life. When I was a baby, when I was a little boy, I saw it all. Now let's move forward. You saw a movie. I saw a movie. Let's call it a movie of the future, of what's going to be. Yes. Yes. I saw everyone attacking Israel, and came against us and fought against us. The IDF will hold them off for two days. Then everyone will just kill us and we won't have anyone to help but God. And then, suddenly... Wait, wait. This war, the IDF will hold for only two days? Two days. And after two days? We'll be finished by then. No IDF? No IDF. So everything is open? Everything is open. So when you say that Gog is Obama, Obama is the United States, you say that he will lead the... He will lead the whole war. And who will join him? Who will join him? Iran will join him. The... Russia? Yes, Russia, South Korea, the whole UN. Really, everyone. Everyone. All 70 nations will... For now, what I also saw is that the Mount of Olives next to Jerusalem, for those who are saved, that mountain will split in two. And when the mountain splits that very second, the Messiah will be revealed to everyone. Everyone will just see that it's the Messiah. We will know it's the Messiah. Here he is, revealed to everyone. He will stand at the entrance of the Mount of Olives, and he will say who can enter and who cannot enter. Anyone who is not saved will stay outside and die and anyone who is worthy will be saved. You have to know what he will be saved from. So the mountain just opens, and also... Now it opens, it opens? It splits in two. Something like... No, no. An earthquake? No. A nuclear bomb? What? No, they will rise up. You know how on the Mount of Olives there are graves, right? So two of the dead people will walk out. Two dead people will come back to life. One from here and one from there. It will split in two. That's how it will happen. And what I saw is that the Messiah is someone who can't sin. Someone with no sin. Someone who never sinned. He is someone who repented? Yes, he never sinned. He had never committed any sins. He is without sin. He didn't commit even one sin. It can't be that the Messiah is someone who sinned. It can be someone who we know, who we know very well. Lots and lots of people know him based on what I knew. But everyone will be very, very surprised that he, of all people, is the Messiah. Also, now, this Messiah, I mean, the Messiah, he will fight against Obama. And not only that, he will kill him and bury him in Israel. And I saw that. And I also want to ask, how will we know when it starts? It will start with a boom. First of all, it has already started. It has started? As far as I could see, it has started. It started on September 11th, 2015. It has already started. On the 27th of Elul last year in 5775. This year, yes. Last Hebrew year. We are in 5776, so it started last year, three days before Rosh Hashanah. Gog and Magog started. Yes, that war has already started. So why don't we sense anything? Because God won't bring it at first. What will happen one certain day, it will just erupt. Something will Will set off and it will just erupt all of the news channels everything everyone will say world war three has started everyone will just know that's it there is no time and everyone will know that god has caused this event you mean that there will be a security incident yes and that causes everything to go out of control yes everyone will start fighting against each other yes exactly so at first they will fight against each other yes and us we will be outside of it but then everyone will come against us they will unite and come against us okay fine we'll see okay It's like he doesn't know this is the mistake. Speak into the microphone. Speak into the microphone. Yes, yes. He is an important person. A great person. What's that? 
I have no idea. I don't know. I only know that he has no sins. He doesn't commit any sins at all. He's a great man. And when he becomes the Messiah, everyone will be very, very surprised that it's him. He was secular. He was secular. Messiah, he says it's someone who must have repented. He is a person who is sinless and everyone knows him. Yes. And it will be a surprise. It will be a surprise that it's him. Wait, wait, slowly, slowly. We want to continue a little more with what you are saying, what you saw in the future. So gentlemen, we have started to understand a few things. First of all, it all started on September 11th, the War of Gog and Magog started. World War III. It seems to be small until some event causes an all-out war to start. He saves people. Like, if he's the Messiah, he isn't the Messiah for nothing. I don't know what you... Whoever goes to Uman is saved? It depends which people. Yes. That is to say, the general rule is like this. It doesn't matter where you live or where you go. The only thing it depends upon is what you do. Yeah, happen is just like... So wait, wait, Nathan, slowly, slowly. We have Gog and Magog, which has already begun. Yes, it's already begun. We have the downfall. They conquer us and get Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives splits. Yes. Whoever enters the Mount of Olives, that essentially protects him. Yes. It protects him, and then God appears, and he is the one who fights the Gentiles. Yes. You say that he comes wearing a white robe with bloodstains, and those bloodstains are in fact the bloodstains of all the Jews who were killed only because they were Jews over all the generations. Yes. The destruction of the first temple, the destruction of the second temple, the Inquisition, there is no lack. No lack. And now God avenges them and just wipes them out. He wipes them out. And he makes a grave for Obama there. In Israel. In Israel. You're in Israel, yes. Okay, now what's the next phase? The next phase, the redemption will begin, but it will only be in the beginning. It will take time until everything begins. First of all, there will be lots of and lots of bodies, and it will take time, a long time until they remove all the bodies. That light that I told you was up there, it will descend, it will be brought down, and that will be our light, like we can see light now. What? It depends who. Yes, most of the Jews will die. What? Again, it doesn't matter where you are, it matters what you do. It doesn't matter where you are, it matters what you do. What? The Gentiles will come here. Whoever is here is here. Whoever isn't, isn't. Everyone is on their own, if they stay outside of Israel. What? If they obeyed the Torah and good deeds, then yes. And if not, then no. If they are wicked, then no. Gentlemen, this is a mistake. It's not where a person lives. It's like if someone comes here to Jerusalem from another country and eats in a steakhouse, and I tell him, listen, that steak isn't kosher. He asks me, then why is it served here in Jerusalem? It's not where you are. It's not that you live in Jerusalem, it's kosher, and if you live in Jerusalem, you are righteous. You could also be righteous in other countries. God doesn't check here. He doesn't do geography tests, but God checks what you do here. He takes the account of each person and every person and checks it. Whoever has earned merit will be saved. Whoever is guilty will not. So that means nothing here will help. They take an x-ray of you and they look at it who you are. If you are okay with the Torah and good deeds, you remain. And it doesn't matter where you are. If you aren't okay, a wicked person can be condemned from Kotel and a righteous person can be saved in New York. God, maybe Nathan doesn't remember this, but we know it, that God will gather everyone and bring him here and whoever is worthy, he will remain alive and will eventually come here. And whoever is not will be lost. The Ramak also wrote about this, that whoever is stiff-necked, he will be lost. So don't rely on a place or not on jewelry or anything. You simply need to consider one thing. Do you study the Torah, obey the commandments, and do good or not? That's it. That's the criteria. Do you understand? He also said that he doesn't know who the Messiah is. What he is saying here, these are things that even without his, I am saying them after learning, even if he didn't say a thing. By the way, for me, for me, Nathan has not said anything new. I am on record for years saying this all. I have known it for a long time. 
It's written by the prophets. It's written in all the commentaries. It's written in the Gemaras. There is nothing new in what he is saying. What surprises me is that it's going to happen right away. It's going to be soon. I also rely on Rabbi Chaim Kanifsky. It's not a lie. It's no lie that he said to drive cars with speakers and to go out into the streets and shout that the Messiah is coming. Rabbi Chaim Kanifsky, who we've all known for years, he is not quick to get excited or speak rashly. Every word he says he weighs on many, many scales. Whoever knows him knows that he does not speak a lot. He doesn't speak much, but when he does speak, he knows what he's saying. He doesn't just blurt out anything. He knows that he is accountable for every word. People have testified that he said to study the seventh tech trait. He said last year to study the seventh tech trait because at the end of the seventh year, the Messiah would come and to drive cars with speakers and announce this in his name. They should specifically say that it's in his name to say that the redemption is here. So what is left? What is left is to repent, but true repentance is with your heart. If a man repents with all his heart, then he becomes worthy to be spared. Check out the link below for the full video of Nathan. In that video, he will describe the Messiah. He will discuss the Third World War. He will show you how can be saved by studying the Torah. And act it up on it. Please click or subscribe to this channel preparing for upcoming episodes. On Matzai Shabbat of July 20th, 2016, 5776, Rabbi Shalom Berger asked Rabbi Kanievsky, What must be done to prepare for the coming of the Messiah? Rabbi Kanievsky gave an unexpectedly direct and simple response, Wait. Now, said Rabbi Kanievsky, All that can be done is to anticipate the imminent arrival of Mashiach. Europeans who hate the Jews led by the Americans headed by President Obama, who also scorns Israel. Israel today is trusting the Gentiles and foreign nations rather than trusting in Almighty God. For their protection and security, as a whole, the nation is still not ready, today, to rebuild the temple, but public opinion is swinging that way. Polls show that there is a great increase in the number who desire to have a temple on the Temple Mount and exert their right to pray there and hold services, including members of the Israeli Knesset, God's commandment is clear. His word is plain, thus says the Lord of hosts. Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations the Messiah shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Haggai 2, 6-7 There has to be a divine sanctuary, or temple on the holy temple mount in Jerusalem to fulfill this prophecy. God says in Mal Malachi, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord, whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, Yahashua, in whom you delight. Behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts, Malachi 3, 1. Just one day before his second stroke, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon gave what would be his last interview to the Japanese economic newspaper Nikkei. Sharon's words echoed the sentiments of many of Israel's citizens who desperately desired peace with its neighbors, while at the same time preserving Israel's sovereignty, he declared, If the Palestinians combat terror, I believe there is a chance to move forward in accordance with the Roadmap Initiative, which, with God's help, will bring peace. Our position is that Jerusalem is not negotiable. We are not going to negotiate on Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be forever a united and undivided capital of Israel, but now, it appears everything is negotiable. While some Israelis saw Sharon as a traitor, and his enemies brand him a butcher and a terrorist, Many others still see him as an indisputable and indispensable national hero. They believe his move to implement the roadmap was a wise maneuver, which hopefully will bring lasting peace to Israel. This issue hangs in the balance, the name of the Messiah. The second revelation in the cryptic note written by Rabbi Kaduri a year before. His death concerned the name of the Messiah. The Messiah had revealed his name to Kaduri, and he left it in a coded message for the world to see when the appointed time came. The name of the Messiah was mysteriously and cryptically sealed in a message. Instructions were given to lock the message away, and not to open it until one year after the rabbi's death. Within weeks of Ariel Sharon's stroke, the elderly rabbi Kaduri died, from 250 
zero to three hundred thousand people flooded the streets of Jerusalem for his funeral. One of the largest in Israel's history. The cryptic message was secreted away for one year, as the beloved rabbi had instructed. Will the current prime minister declare Yeshua as the Messiah? There, before the eyes of the world. Was the name of the soon coming Messiah according to this celebrated teacher of Israel? Shock and chagrin and dismay struck the expectant rabbis, waiting to see the name revealed. He also said that he doesn't know who the Messiah is. What he is saying here, these are things that even without his, I am saying them after learning, even if he didn't say a thing. By the way, for me, for me, Nathan has not said anything new. I am on record for years saying this all. I have known it for a long time. It's written by the prophets. It's written in all the commentaries. It's written in the Gemaras. There is nothing new in what he is saying. What surprises me is that it's going to happen right away. It's going to be soon. I also rely on Rabbi Chaim Kanifsky. It's not a lie. It's no lie that he said to drive cars with speakers and to go out into the streets and shout that the Messiah is coming. Rabbi Chaim Kanifsky, who we've all known for years, he is not quick to get excited or speak rashly. Every word he says he weighs on many, many scales. Whoever knows him knows that he does not speak a lot. He doesn't speak much, but when he does speak, he knows what he's saying. He doesn't just blurt out anything. He knows that he is accountable for every word. People have testified that he said to study the seventh tectrate. He said last year to study the seventh tectrate because at the end of the seventh year, the Messiah would come and to drive cars with speakers and announce this in his name. They should specifically say that it's in his name to say that the redemption is here. So what is left? What is left is to repent, but true repentance is with your heart. If a man repents with all his heart, then he becomes worthy to be spared. Kanievsky died at his home in Nybrak due to a heart attack. On the Jewish holiday of Shushan Purim on March 18, 2022, at the age of 94, the rabbi believes that the current age of hatred for those who learn the Bible fits with prophecy about the Messiah, according to Daily Star. In June 2018 said the 90-year-old predicted the world on the cusp entering the messianic age. The rabbi believes that the current age of hatred for those who learn the Bible fits with prophecy about the Messiah. Adding that the signs of redemption are starting to appear. Comparing the current age to the sunrise, Rabbi Konievsky went on to add, This generation displays absolute hatred for those who learn the Bible, especially in recent years. We are seeing all of the conditions described in the Talmud appear before us. It is for this reason that we anticipate the appearance of the Messiah at any moment. But the answer to all on who the Messiah was stays with Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri.